up guys this is electric paul 61 here and today we're going to be doing something a little different for my channel uh, i'm going to be taking a break from my typical minecraft recordings because i have recently decided that i'm going to be starting a youtube series on game programming in case you didn't know i really enjoy programming it's one of my favorite pastimes and in particular, I like creating games because I love playing games, so it's only natural that I'd like to make them too. So, today what we're going to be taking a look at is we're going to be taking a look at this program called Greenfoot. Now, Greenfoot is a program developed by the University of Kent, and it allows you to use Java to create games. Uh, Greenfoot will take care of all of the low-level programming. It'll have a screen for you it will let you render stuff to that screen and it automatically has uh, super classes for your world which is obviously your screens and your actors which are the things that appear on that screen like your characters your bullets your enemies so forth uh, it will also have methods so that you can have your updates in that game so for example in Greenfoot there is a method that's called approximately 60 times a second and that's like your update method and so it'll take care of all of that groundwork for you. So you can just focus on making the game itself. Because of that, it's one of it's my favorite game making program. If I wanted to program in Java, which is the language I'm the most familiar with. So what I have here is I've gone ahead and created a scenario. I call it YouTube scenario. It's where I'm going to be doing all of my video tutorials here on in this scenario. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this world and this actor. Now, if I were to open them, I can only open documentation. So instead of doing that and going through boring documentation, we're just going to jump right into it and we're going to make a new subclass. This here is the world itself. So what I have here is I have two images already selected. We're going to use paper.jpg as our image and we're going to just call this my world. That's a good name. Alright, so right off the bat, if I hit compile here, as you can see, we have ourselves a nice world. Now, this is all well and good, but it seems like we could make this uh, image a little bit bigger. Maybe fill up the screen a little bit more. So, if we go here and we can open the editor for my world, here's where all the action happens. This is where you can go and actually program all of the stuff for your world. So, here in the constructor, this is the constructor. This is what gets called whenever you create the My World. Whenever I open up Greenfoot and load in this YouTube scenario, Greenfoot's going to say, okay, My World, you're up. And My World will say, okay, here's what I'm going to run. The first thing I do, as soon as I'm created, this is what I'm going to run. And right here, it's going to say Super, which is the Super class. So in the World class, because this is an extension of World, as you can see, what it's going to say is in the World class, it's going to create a new world with 600 by 400 cells with a cell size of 1 by 1 pixels. So basically, in layman's terms, it's going to create an image 600 pixels by 400 pixels. If we change these values here to say 800, by 600 we can make a world that's a bit larger so now if we close out of this and recompile our world's a bit bigger that's much better now that we have our world set up we can go ahead and create an actor if I create a new subclass we can call this character and we'll set it to be a hippo so if we have our character here as you can see if we open the editor it has some stuff already in here so let's take a look at this and examine it. We have our act method, as you can see here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Greenfoot has a system that lets you update at about 60 times per second. This act method is that update. Every tick, we'll call it, in the Greenfoot system, it will call act one time in each cycle. So because it, the cycles, happen about 60 times a second act gets called approximately 60 times every second this can be adjusted with the speed slider down here but when it's in the middle it's about 60 act cycles per second so anything you want your actor to do will go in here so if you want them to you know, walk jump 
so on and so forth, right? That all goes in here, and he'll do that 60 times a second. So what we're going to do is we're not going to get there yet. We're just going to take a look at adding a character to your world. If we go ahead here and we can right click and create new character, that will let us drag our hippo onto the world. If I want to put him, say, here, we can see, okay, the hippo's in the world. He doesn't do anything yet. If I go ahead and hit run, I can hit my keys, I go ahead and click on my mouse. It's not going to do anything because we haven't added any code yet. But you'll also notice that if I hit reset, the hippo's gone. I can go ahead and put it back, but when I hit compile or reset, he's going to disappear. And that can be a bit frustrating because if I have a bunch of actors over here and I put them all into a very specific spot on the world, and I go and run it, and then there's a bug, and I have to go and recompile, and they're all gone. So the people at the University of Kent, they're pretty smart guys, so they said, hey, Let's add a way for the user to save the world. We can right click and we can hit save the world. Now, whenever we go into my world, which automatically opens up here, as you can see, whenever the constructor for my world is called, it's going to call this prepare method. And if we look at inside of the prepare method, it was automatically generated. It will prepare the world for the start of the program. That is create the initial objects and add them to the world. So what that means is it's going to add whatever you had in there before you saved the world. So all we had in there was the hippo character. So what it's going to do is it's going to create a character object, call it character, and it's going to add that object at the X location 216 and at the Y location 176. So basically what that means is add a hippo right there. <laughs> Whenever I compile, I can move the hippo. Whenever I recompile, he'll reappear at his home spot right there. So that's all we're going to take a look at today. Uh, tomorrow, or whenever I make my next video, we can go ahead and take a look at something a little bit more interesting. Perhaps I think a good place to start would be movement. I think left to right movement would be a good place to start. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoy this uh, a little bit of new style of video, that I'm doing, uh, please go ahead and drop a like. Uh, if you will have any questions or suggestions, don't be afraid to leave a comment. I'm very open to uh, you guys and your ideas. I uh, want to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, and if you really enjoy this, go ahead and subscribe. It really tells me how much you guys enjoy my content and it will let me know that you guys like what I'm producing. So that's all I've got time for in this video. Uh, once again, thank you guys for watching. You guys are so awesome. Bye.